Hello everyone, welcome to Big Data Thoughts. Today we are going to talk about data walls. So what are data walls? Why were they used? What are the advantages, disadvantages and some of the key concepts? It is good to know uh, what is going on in the big data world or the different terms that are being used and implemented. So this video is totally dedicated to data vault as a concept. So let's get started. First of all, what is a data vault? So if you hear the name data vault, it looks like it is some kind of a data storage, but it is not. Data vault or DV is a modeling technique. So if, so if we want to build an enterprise data warehouse, which is going to hold a huge amount of data. So data vault is one of the ways to model the data. Data vault is an innovative data modeling technique for uh, EDWs. It is supposed to have a lot of details that are stored. It also gives you flexibility to have historical tracking or lineage. So all in all, it's a set of normalized tables which are linked to each other uniquely and it can support multiple functional areas of business. So this data model has uh, been, it is in such a way, modeled in such a way that it can depict different areas of business that we may have. Now, why did data vault uh, come into picture or why were data vaults built? So the whole concept of having a data vault kind of a modeling technique is to have agility, flexibility and scalability. And there were many issues So the kind of data modeling techniques that were being used for building enterprise data warehouses has their own had their own limitations and shortly we'll look into those limitations. So to do away with those limitations of not being flexible, not being scalable or the time to market, this data vault concept came in. So it was built to be very, very granular, non-volatile, auditable. One of the salient features of this modeling was that it was auditable or you could do history tracking. You can have a historical rep repository of your enterprise data. <clears throat> so data walls were established and they enabled auditing of historical data. They permitted parallel loading. So the performance was good. They allowed the organizations to have a variety of data sources, bring in the data and create even the historical lineage. So overall, if you look at any enterprise data warehouse that is being built, the concept remains the same where you bring in data from multiple sources, you stage it, you take the data, transform, aggregate, and then give it back for uh, usage in terms of reporting, analytics, etc. So here, when we use a data vault kind of a model, we are doing the same, but the way it is structured is that it gives you flexibility and it also helps you to do entire lineage tracking. So let us first understand what were the issues with the data models that were initially used to build an enterprise data warehouse. So this diagram is kind of a, a high level architecture of how EDW was built. So typically what would happen is there would be multiple sources <clears throat> which are coming to a landing area. After they are put into a landing area, there would be a ELT process or ETL process done to create an enterprise data warehouse and subsequently data marts were created, which were then consumed. That was the approach. Now the issue in this kind of an approach is time to market because you are following this whole step by step approach to reach to the data mart from where finally the data would be consumed. So this introduced a certain time that was needed. So time to market was more, complexity was more. So a data warehouse needed uh, multiple data sources to be integrated and there was a data model that you had to define for the entire EDW. So it's a model which can accommodate all the data coming in from different sources. This required highly skilled people, it required time, it required constantly having that model in such a way that it can incorporate or consume data from different sources. It was not flexible because it was a 3NF form model and it had certain relationships established and you had to fit in the data into that. So it was difficult to scale, it was difficult to change. And these were the issues that people started facing when they were building such huge enterprise data warehouses. <coughs> after which data vault came in. Now let us look at how data vault is different from a traditional way of modeling of a EDW. And why do we say that data vaults are more flexible and um, agile? That is because if you look at the model here, we do have a landing area, 
just like we had for other models data models there there are different sources that are sending data in different forms like files it is landing to an area where we are then doing our elt and loading it now instead of previously where we saw that we were putting it into edw and creating marts now what we are doing is we are saying that there are two layers in this data vault one is the raw vault which stores the data as is and one is a business vault so we inside the box of data vault there are two layers we are creating a raw vault and a business vault and then we have a data mart what is the advantage of doing this if you look at this diagram it looks pretty similar to the earlier one but there is a subtle difference what is happening here is the data loading is happening still in the landing area so data is there in the landing area but from there we are putting it into a raw data vault this process of putting the data from landing to raw data vault is purely purely restructuring we are not doing anything to the content because we want to store as is content in the raw form available in our raw vault so uh, there is nothing that is done to the content but there is just a bit of formatting that happens and the stored data is uh, kept in the raw vault without cleansing without modifying it is absolutely as is that means if something goes wrong tomorrow to the business world we can create the business world again from the raw world we don't have to go back to the sources so we are creating an entire as is copy in the raw world here there is a complete separation of responsibility because the raw world holds unmodified raw data and whatever processing we want to do to restructure this data is done only in the business world so there will be predefined set of business rules which will be applied on the raw world to create the business walls so which means that the business rules are both derived from and stored separately from the raw data there is a clear separation of responsibility data in raw world is completely pure and untouched in a raw form then there are business rules or metadata which is stored separately to process the data and put it into the business world the third thing is we have business rules here these business rules are something which are <clears throat> for cleansing the data for deduplication for doing any calculations computations on the data everything that needs to be done on the raw data is in a form of a business rule <coughs> the data marts then lastly is the data mart so initially uh, kimball suggested that we should have data marts which have calculated results that can be used for consumption so basically data marts are nothing but facts and dimension tables that we have now if we use a data vault approach the data marts are more ephemeral what does that mean data marts need not be really materialized uh, or or a data mart may not be really constricted to having particular facts dimension tables created it is more ephemeral because they can be just a view which is pointing to your business vault or your raw vault so it doesn't force you in um, like in previous data modeling techniques there had to be a data mart a physical physicalized data mart which means it's not a view it's actually a table a fact and dimension table that you create but here it allows you to create a view and point to either the raw world or the business world depending on your need so it is much more flexible so all in all all the disadvantages that the previous data models had in terms of separation of responsibility having business rules or transformations separated out as metadata or having data marts which are actually views pointing to any of the layers all of these advantages were introduced in data worlds now let us look at some of the key concepts of data world so there are three things to understand when we talk about data world hubs links and satellites if we understand this we will completely understand how a data vault is built or what is that data modeling technique which is called as data vault first of all there is something called hub hub is the very basic building block it is nothing but a list of business keys which are representing your business objects so this data model really revolves around identifying just like in our data models we say entities right entities and relationships and we create a er model similarly in data vault what we have is business objects or business entities each of those business objects will have their unique list of business keys to identify the business object that is stored in something known as hub then there is link link creates a link between your 
it's a link, a list of link or transactions that represents the unit of work of a business process. So everything here is modeled in terms of business objects, business processes. So hubs is the list of keys to identify business objects. <coughs> Satellites is the actual data, actual uh, descriptive data for hubs and links. And links are nothing but associations that represent the work of the business processes. So this may sound a bit uh, cryptic right now, but let's dive into each of these and it will give us a better understanding of what hub, link and satellite mean. So let's look at hubs first. Now in a data world, what is a hub? A hub will contain, as I said, a list of unique business keys. So first we'll identify what are our business entities or business objects. Each of them will have something to identify them uniquely. That list is known as a hub in the data world. These business keys are keys or codes which the business can ident use to identify one record in this business object. And these are just maybe for simplicity's sake, think about it as a primary key. So there are very low chances of that really changing and it is something which can uniquely identify a record. Now what will hub contain internally? What will a hub contain? It's a list of business keys, but what all does it have? So it has a surrogate key. It has a business key. Business key is like a primary key. It will also have a surrogate key, which will uh, help it to connect to other business objects. It will have a record source. Now we spoke about uh, data walls having historical tracking or auditing. That is why it is very important to store the record source, which means uh, how do you know from where this data came in? Now this record source can be used to see which system loaded each of these business key first. So it is meant for doing the historical tracking. Also the hub may have some of the metadata fields like information about who did the update, user, the time, the date, all of that. So these are the four things that a hub would store. Then come to links. The links are nothing but associations across this business keys. Now these associations may change time uh, over time because we may get a new data, new relationships may be established between the business objects. But these links are actually physical representation of foreign keys. In data modeling terms, we will call it foreign keys or associative entity. So they are establishing association uh, between different entities. So if you look at a data vault, a hub and a link is just like the skeleton. It's the basic framework which is allowing, allowing you to establish relationship or identify the business objects. That is what is the purpose of hubs and links. Then comes the satellites. Now satellites are actually the skin, the muscle and the organ which means it is the actual descriptive data. Hubs and links are the skeleton because they are just helping you to identify unique records and establish association between different business objects. Satellites are actual skin and muscle. They define the context. They give you the actual detailed data. And when you talk about a data warehouse, the warehousing portion is actually the satellite. It contains descriptive data that gives context to keys and associations and this data Descriptive data is the one or we can say it is the transactional data or the actual data which is changing very frequently. So the purpose of the satellite is to capture all of these data changes that are happening. That is why we say data vault modeling enables you to do historical tra uh, tracking. Satellites will actually provide you descriptive data about the business keys, about the relationship of the keys, any changes that are happening over time. The entire job of a satellite is to record the information as it is loaded from the source and how it changes over time in our system. So this is the warehousing part of the data warehouse or it is the actual descriptive data. Let us look at an example of how all these three hub link and satellite fit together. So this is an example that I have taken from one of the blogs because I just wanted to put all of this together. So look at this so there are three uh, things here the customer the product and the order so how have they modeled it using data vault uh, model is that 
each of these entities like customer product and order will have uh, details about it so if it is let's say customer the customer would have some keys to uniquely identify that customer that is going to be stored in hub satellite is going to store the actual data or detailed data also it will store how the data changed over time now the linkage between customer and product is stored in link records the history of that entire interaction between product and customer similarly the whatever is the interaction between customer and order or product or order that is all getting stored in the link that's the association and entire descriptive data about product about customer or order is getting stored in their respective satellite and hub is storing the keys uh, respective keys of each of these entities so typically any uh, whenever data vault model has to be implemented business entities business processes needs to be identified and for each of those entities we will have hub satellite and a linkage of that entity with another business entity so this is how a data vault model would look like now let us look at this picture we looked at it previously also now coming back again to it what is happening we are bringing in data from multiple sources to a landing area we are not doing anything to change that data <clears throat> so when we say elt here elt is very simply a extraction and load not even transform you can say it's like a el it is loaded in absolutely raw format in the raw world and then it is loaded into business world after applying business rules in each of these layers raw and business it is actually having those hubs links and satellites so it is completely um, stored in the form of keys relationships and actual data <coughs> so and then you create the data marts which can be either actual tables or it can be views pointing to any of these layers raw or business so the way to look at data vault is it's a different kind of modeling technique to give you more flexibility and audit tracking what are the advantages of vaults advantages is of course incremental delivery since you are not creating a uber data model where everything needs to fit in your model is evolving as and when business entities keep coming you keep adding those keys to the hub you keep adding relationships to the uh, links and the data into the satellite so it is much more flexible it is not like that 3nf modeling approach that we earlier had they do not require any rework when there is a new data bit getting added <coughs> and since it is storing both raw and business derived data separately it supports changes to business rules and you can practically recreate the whole business uh, world using the raw world the complexity is less because it is a two step approach it separates the complete data, technical data restructuring from the application of business rules so data cleaning is also a part of a business rule and it can be managed entirely independently of the data load effort raw data as i said is separately stored so it is very much possible to populate the business vault if something happens then it is elegant it supports changes over times it is similar to uh, the concept of slowly changing dimensions where the satellite here is also storing each and every change that is happening then there is lineage and audit uh it supports data lineage and audit it is it has high performance or it promotes i should not say it has it promotes the kind of model it is it promotes high performance parallel loads and you can automate this whole entity relationship modeling and dimensional design uh, so whatever uh, er modeling we used to do or dimensional modeling we used to do which required a lot of experience time and effort data vault makes it easier the way it is modeled and it is easier to automate but of course there are certain disadvantages or <coughs> cons of a data vault so data vault is structured solution hence the team needs proper training or data vault implementation so it's a new concept somebody for somebody to understand what is a hub what is a link what is a satellite how should we store the data to enable that historical tracking have good performance there is a learning curve so that is of course there <clears throat> these data vault models can be more complex or complicated because we are now modeling everything in terms of business objects so it can be a bit more overwhelming for people who are used to er modeling or dimensional modeling in that sense 
it will need lot of storage <coughs> because now we are talking about two layers so data is getting stored twice in a raw world and a business world so it has its own advantages but storage requirement is much more <coughs> when data is ingested into a data vault it may not be ready for user instantly you need to create the raw world the business world and you may need to create the data marts as well so these are some of the disadvantages of a data vault it may it may not be really suitable for very small scale of data when the data is huge you you can identify business entities and processes then this is also one of the data models to look at and think about So it's not like a silver bullet or a solution to every problem of AEW, but it is also it is just one of the alternate approaches which is more flexible and dynamic. So we can explore this to store our data or create AEWs. So I hope this quick primer or snapshot on what data worlds are, the key concepts may have helped you a bit to understand, and then get deeper into data worlds now. so please like share and subscribe to the channel and keep uh, watching the interesting videos thank you